If you intend to travel abroad with some electronic devices, or if you want to bring some electronic devices into the country, you certainly know that various compatibility issues can arise between the electronic devices and the electrical network at the destination. Some of these issues are obvious, while others are quite subtle, so stay until the end to find out what such issues may arise and how we can solve them. Let's start with the obvious issue, which is plugs. We all know that plugs differ from one country to another, and we also know that there are several adapters for adapting our local plug to the socket at the destination. For example, in Romania we use type F plugs like this one, or type C plugs like this one. So all we need to know is that these plugs have a designator consisting of one letter, so we simply need to google the type of plug that is used at the destination, and then we need to buy the proper adapter for that type of socket. However, there is one big caveat about these plugs, and that is the fact that they only make the links from here to here. And this means that they don't change the voltage or the frequency. For example, this one is nice enough to say this adapter does not convert voltage. And this one that I got in Tokyo says make sure the voltage, whatever that means. Unfortunately, the mains voltage differs from one country to another. For example, here in Romania we have a voltage of 230 volts, while in the USA it is 120 and in Japan it is 100 volts. The important thing to note here is that there are some appliances that work anywhere on the globe, just like this laptop charger for example. However, there are some appliances that only work in one of these regions, just like this hair dryer for example. So the proper thing to do is to have a look at the specs. For example, in the case of this laptop charger, the mains voltage range is anywhere from 100 to 240 volts. However, for this hair dryer, the voltage range is just 220 to 240 volts, so it wouldn't be usable in the USA or in Japan. With this in mind, you can simply google the mains voltage at the destination, and with these pieces of information, you can decide whether or not your appliances are compatible. In case they are not compatible, you need to know that there are several transformers that can change the voltage, for example, from 230 volts to 120 volts, or they can even step up the voltage from 120 to 230 volts. If you choose to use such a transformer, you need to make sure that the power rating of the transformer is higher than the power rating of your appliance. So once again, check the specs and make sure that the transformer is suitable. Another important thing to note here is that there are some cheap adapters that are only slightly larger than plug adapters that claim to change the voltage as well. However, such devices distort the voltage waveform so they can damage certain appliances. So it's a good idea to avoid them altogether. And you really don't need to be an expert to tell a good transformer from a bad one. A good transformer is heavy, it is big, and it is relatively expensive. However, a transformer has its drawbacks too. The transformer doesn't change the frequency, it can only change the voltage. Which takes us to the next chapter. Unlike the DC voltage produced by a battery, the mains voltage is AC, meaning alternating current. This simply means that the voltage changes polarity a few dozen times every second. The number of polarity changes per second is called the frequency. Frequency also differs from one country to another, so once again we need to google the frequency at the destination and make sure that our appliances work for that frequency. For example, here in Romania, the mains frequency is 50 Hz, however in the USA it is 60 Hz. So just to recap, let's have a quick look at these voltages on the oscilloscope. So this is what the voltage in Europe looks like compared to the voltage in the USA for example. We can see that both the frequency and the amplitude are different. Another important aspect is the maximum current. For example, for this adapter the maximum current is 13 amps. So we need to make sure that our load draws less than that. Otherwise we risk damaging the adapter and the whole thing turns into a fire hazard. And last but not least we have to talk about ground. There are some plugs that have ground connections to them, which means that for safety reasons it is a good idea to use adapters that also have the ground connection, like this one. However, if you use a phone charger like this one that doesn't have a ground connection, so it only has two prongs, 
an adapter like this one is perfectly acceptable. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please follow or subscribe because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now. Bye.